Hey there, my name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. So in this video, my plan is to follow in the footsteps of the YouTuber Keep On Coding, which I really liked his video about applying to 50 jobs and seeing what happens. So I wanted to try to apply to 50 software engineering internships using my new resume that I did in these videos that I worked on, like building your resume. I wanted to see if it actually worked to actually help me get a job. And I want to see what the process is like and take you along on the journey of me getting rejected, getting interviews somehow, and just see what happens. So currently it's the month of December, or it's like the end of December when I'm starting to film this. I applied for a few positions at the end of November and beginning of December, and I got like some traction there. And it's really weird, like I actually got interviews. I'm surprised. And that was before I changed my resume. And now that I have a new resume, I want to see if I can apply for more positions and see what happens. Because if you want the backstory, I haven't really applied for many jobs. Like at the beginning of 2020, I applied for like around 20-ish positions, like software engineering internships, just to see what would happen. And I got rejected by all of them, except for like Cisco or something that gave me an online assessment. I did it, never heard back from them. So that's all my experience. And like, obviously I'm in the dev degree program at Shopify. So I've interviewed at Shopify a few times to get onto my teams. So that's like literally my interview experience. That's it. So that's why I wanted to try doing this to get better at interviewing and see what other companies are out there. Okay. So at the beginning of this video, I just wanted to show you how I'm going to be keeping track of all the companies I apply to. I just made this job applications notion thing. I don't even know what they're called. Uh, template, I assume. So maybe I should actually upload these, but the companies I've applied to so far are MLH for their MLH fellowship, which I wanted to do like open source coding. So I actually had my interview today, like the first interview, which is just like my talking about my eligibility and like why I want to do it. So it's kind of behavioral. Then actually I applied to this Palo Alto Networks thing kind of just randomly. And I'm actually writing how I found these things. So I found this through Ripple Match, which is some website where like they try to find you, like they try to match you with the companies that are on that website. So then they matched me with Palo Alto Networks. And I was like, oh, okay, I might as well like try out, like just apply for it and see what happens because I wanted to see how Ripple Match worked because I was part of the website for a while, but I never actually applied to anything. And then what happened was like, I kept notes of everything. So maybe I'll explain this so soon, but it was very interesting. And I actually got an offer, which is cool. And it was like a R&D intern type of thing. And then I applied to Twitch and just because my friends all applied to it. And then now I have an interview, which is very weird and I'm nervous for it, but it's at the beginning of January and I'm keeping track of all the things that happen. And randomly I applied to Lululemon as well. Yeah, um, cause they had some random internship and my friends were applying. So we wanted to apply just for jokes. Okay, so maybe we can take a brief intermission and actually talk about what happened with Palo Alto Networks and what's going on with Twitch right now, because that's kind of crazy. I don't know how this happened, but okay. So what happened with uh, Palo Alto Networks was the first thing that happened was a recruiter reached out to me like through Ripple Match, they said, oh yeah, recruiter is interested. Like you can set up a meeting with them. I was like, okay, cool, interesting. It was like, they said 15 minute meeting just to see who you are and what your interests are because it was just listed as an R&D intern. So they wanted to see, oh, what team would you fit with? So then I met with the recruiter, super nice. Like my first time actually talking to a recruiter like in this type of case, like I talked to them normally, but not for jobs. So that happened. And then she said, like, oh, okay, I'll try to find you a team to interview for. So she did that and I was supposed to do the OA. So I had not yet done the online assessment and that was through Codility, which I had never touched before, but it's essentially the same thing as leak code, hacker rank, that kind of stuff. Just the development environment that you need to do your coding questions in. And those are three very easy questions. Like I did not need to study. It was simple questions that were not like leak code style. So that was fine. But obviously I signed an NDA, cannot say what it was about but that happened. And then I got an interview with the team for a cloud controller thing and it's for in America. So this is like interesting because I am in Canada. And the first interview was with a woman and she was very nice. She was like super friendly, but it was kind of a chaotic interview, not gonna lie. Like she was, she was like, okay, you have to first, like she gave me a question. She said, okay, you're gonna write it in Java. And I was like, what? I'm gonna write it in Java. I was like, Cause apparently like I said, oh yeah, my best programming language is Java, but I haven't used it in a long time, like since the beginning of 2020. So that's been a long time. 
So I was like, oh, can I write it in Python instead? And she's like, okay, fine. So I wrote it in Python. It was just like some question that had a few parts. Like do this step, then that step, then that step. And like the last step was the hardest one. And she was just like trying to rush me to get to that step. And I was like, okay, okay. And I, feel, I felt like if we were in person, she would have just wanted to like shake me or something. Like I was being like too slow, I guess. Cause she was like, okay, first tell me the, what, what your ideas are. No, start coding. No, explain your ideas. No, start coding. So at the end, I told her that it was uh, a struggling, I struggled a lot, but apparently I got through cause I did solve the question and like, and it was really funny because there was some part where it was like recursion and then I did the recursion and then she's like, you did it wrong. And I was like, no, I didn't. And I explained it. And then she's like, you don't understand the recursion stack. I'm like, yes, I do. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. And then she looked at it and she's like, oh yeah, you're right. Okay, you got the correct answer. So that happened. The second interview was way chiller. Like this really like got a nice guy who literally just graduated university. He was great. He interviewed me. He asked me two questions. I wasn't able to finish the second one because like I was able to like not finish coding it, but I explained how I would do it. Like the solution I was able to think of and like, I coded a little bit of it. He was like, oh, let's stop here so you can ask questions about the roles. So that was really nice. And then I got an offer and it was very crazy. And it was for a lot of money. And I ran downstairs to my parents and told them how much money. It was $43 USD an hour, which is a lot of money because you convert it to Canadian and it's like $55, I think, which is crazy for an internship. Even though like, I think the highest internship pay I have heard is like 50 to $60 USD, which is a lot of money. And that's crazy. So I was like, whoa. And my friends, I told my friends and they were like, what Maria, you can feed a family of four on that kind of salary, <laughs> which is true. I told them, thank you for the opportunity but I don't want to do it and stuff like that. I was being nice. And yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty nice. And it was a cool company, like they do cybersecurity and stuff. Like I said, I didn't mention that. You could research them, but it was like a cloud type of role, which is cool. But it was in Java, which I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, so now I want to explain what's been happening with Twitch so far. So basically I applied, like Twitch, how it works is they have three online assessments that you can apply for. And you, if you apply early, you can do all three and like they'll take your best mark. But I applied right before their second online assessment came out, which I haven't done yet, but I shall try doing and let you know what happens with that. So they're, so I'm going to be doing their second one, possibly their third one. If I don't do well on the second one, who knows? But what happened was right after I got the email for, oh, online, you can do the online assessment. Here's the link. I got another email from one of the recruiters and he was like, oh, would you like to set up a call to talk? And I was like, okay, sure. And only one of my friends got that as well. I think it's because both of us, we have more internships than our other friends or like more prominent companies, I suppose. Or actually he reached out to me because he's like, oh yeah, the way Twitch chooses people to be interns is that they put your profile up and then any team can look at it and like flag you and say, oh, I want this person. Like this person seems interesting. And then that's why he reached out to me because some team flagged me. Actually Twitch music, which is really cool. They flagged me because of my experience with React and like front end stuff. And he told me about that. And I was like, oh, actually like, I don't want to do front end. And then he's like, oh, okay, what are you interested in? And then I told him like, I want to get better at Python. I want to learn Golang. And he's like, oh, Twitch is actually a Go shop. So that means like they use Golang a lot. And I'm like, what? That's so cool. So I was like, yes, this is like a great opportunity. And he also was telling me that they only hire 45 interns. He reached out to me also because like this other guy from my university, like the only person that works at Twitch from my university, he, he, he was like, oh yeah, like he was great. So maybe someone from your university is good too. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like finally we're getting put on the map. Like you are represent. <laughs> he thought my app was clever, like the stock my prof thing that I have on my resume. So that was really funny. And he also asked me some questions. So they were, why did you apply to Twitch? Which I told him like, I really like the Michael Siebel, like the co-founder because of all his Y Combinator videos. Like he's just inspirational. And also because of like what Twitch stands for, like the values and how it gives people the opportunity to actually like make money doing the things that they love, which is really great. And I appreciate that. He also asked me like, what was the time that you had to learn something new? What was a project that you're proud of? What are your best programming languages and frameworks and what projects at Twitch, like specific platform areas or disciplines do you want to work in? So that's where I explain like what I'm interested in. And he said that the technical interview process is that there's two interviews for 60 minutes each. So we'll see how that goes because since I told him, oh yeah, I don't want to work on the 
like I don't want to do React. So he's like, okay, I'll try to see if there's any other team for you. And he found another team. It's the membership team. So that's really interesting. The tech stack would be Golang and JavaScript. So I'm really excited to interview for that team, but also nervous. So I need to practice because I am bad, bad at interviewing. <laughs> so I'll be practicing during the winter break and try not to fail the interview. And then over the winter break, I started applying for more jobs. And I actually did a few coding assessments and personality assessments. And those were pretty interesting, I guess. And I also got uh, lied to by Ripple Match about SAP and Two Sigma. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to do an update. Today is January 6th and I just had my Twitch interview and I'm like on an adrenaline rush kind of because it was at 2 p.m until 3 p.m. And then before that, I just felt like a chihuahua in the cold, like my whole body just shaking. And I was so nervous. And I took so many notes of like things that I should know and like questions, different types of questions. It was so stressful. And I was searching up on like Glassdoor and all those other company websites about what kind of interview questions Twitch gives. And they were like, oh, a lot of difficult string questions. I was like, oh no, okay, I have to search up those types of questions. And then it turned out to be like a graph question, which was completely opposite, which was funny. And then it was it was really interesting because like how the interview went was like 15 minutes of the woman, like there was one woman and the other one was just like observing or shadowing. So like she knows how to interview people. And then they're both from the same team. And so the woman interviewing me, she first spent like a little bit of time, like a few minutes explaining what their team does. And then she was asking me questions based off of my resume. So she was like, oh, this one project of yours interested me. Can you tell me more about it? Like, was it a group project or an individual one? And what did you do? So I was telling her about that. And it was a quality auth one that I did at a hackathon with a few of my teammates and we won that, like we won a few things. It was really cool. Like I talked about what I did, which was like the Python, like the backend stuff, and then like connecting it to Microsoft Azure. And it was like the first time that I used Azure. And then she also asked, what did I learn from that experience? And I said that it taught me how to use other companies APIs because I had never really done that before. So then I told her about the other times that I used APIs that I could remember off the top of my head, which was like Google's AR kit. And I was also telling her about how difficult it was for me to use Instagram's API because they were changing it while I was trying to use it. And then I also mentioned recently I was on the opposite side and I was the one trying to write that type of documentation for APIs in Shopify when I was like interning in the backend team. And then I was telling her like, it was, it was good to know both sides of like how it feels to use the APIs. So then it helped me write some of the documentation to explain it much better. So it's kind of like in cybersecurity where if you wanna be good at defense, you have to be good at offense too. So you have to know how to hack things. After that, what happened was we did like the coding question for like 30 minutes or something. And then, or maybe like 40 minutes and we worked together and it was really, really fun. And it was cute because she, one of them had a cat and the other had a dog, like the interviewers. So it was nice to see that. And then we worked together and it was really fun trying to figure it out. And we didn't fully finish it, but like we knew like where we were going. And she's like, oh yeah, if we had 10 extra minutes, then we would have been able to figure it out, I'm sure. And then that was really good. Just to be able to like be honest about like my abilities and be like, yeah, like it was really funny at one point. She's like, oh, I think what you're doing is actually gonna work. And I was laughing so hard and I was like, oh really? And she's like, oh no, not to be mean. And I was like, and yeah, I was like, no, don't worry. Like I did not expect this to go as well it is, as it is going. So that was really funny. After that, I got a few minutes to ask questions to them. And then I asked them like, what are some things that you look for in an intern? Like what are some qualities that you look for? And she was just saying like, you have to be excited to learn, bring energy and passion to the team and have like good computer science fundamentals, which hopefully I have those things, but it was actually a really cool experience and I'm happy that I did it, even though it was super scary. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, Twitch does it like there's three OAs that you can possibly do like online assessments. And then I was like, okay, I'll do it after my exams. And then I kept pushing it off and I was like, oh, I'll just do it before my interview. Cause then the recruiter said, just do it before the interview. And then I realized that it was due January 1st. And then I tried doing it yesterday, which is January 5th. And then it was still open. So I did it, submitted it. And then we'll see how that works out. And there's a third one. It was supposed to come out, but I didn't get an email. So I emailed the recruiters. So we'll see what happens with that. So basically I'm bad and I feel very guilty that I did not do this because I did not keep track of when the OA was due because I was just like, oh yeah, it's due at the end of January, which it was not. So I'm dumb and I hate myself for doing that. And also update is that I applied to 38 jobs because I cannot find 50 jobs. I wanted to make this video for 50 software engineering internships, but I can't find any that like I'm qualified for. And like, there are not a lot of postings and also some upcoming interviews that I actually have, which is very surprising is that I have my second interview for the MLH fellowship, which is going to be on Saturday for like 10 minutes of me explaining my project. Also on Saturday, like I got an email because I'm going to a hackathon and then this company like Bell 
and they messaged me and they're like, oh yeah, like I didn't even apply for anything, but they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna be at the hackathon. We can do a speed interview with you for 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay, sure, we can do that. The next interview is like on Monday. I have a phone call with a recruiter from MongoDB out of all places, even though I failed at using MongoDB in my startup app. <laughs> so that was funny. Another interview is Microsoft Garage Internship, which is kind of like a startup-y type thing in Microsoft. And it sounds interesting. So I will try doing that. And that's for Vancouver, actually. Hello, this is Maria from the future. And this video is going to be too long. So that's why I decided to split it up into part one and part two. So part one was kind of like November, December, a little bit of January. And then part two is going to be like the rest of January and then February. Because that was like my recruiting season, I guess. <laughs> this this time around, my first time around. And yeah, so watch out for part two, which is coming out tomorrow in normal time. So Thursday, March 11th is when it will come out. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. So the story so far, the saga continues and it gets even crazier somehow. And yeah, if you did, remember to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe so you can get notified when I make more videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.